Welcome back to A People's Guide to Publishing. I'm Joe Beal, the founder and CEO of Microcosm Publishing and Distribution. I'm also the author of A People's Guide to Publishing, which distills what I've learned from selling millions of books over the past 25 years. I'm Ellie Blue. I'm the Editorial and Marketing Director here at Microcosm. We are an independent midlist publisher based in Portland, Oregon and Cleveland, Ohio. We have over 700 books, over 25 employees, and we make about 40 new books every year. And we distribute thousands of titles from other publishers. We started this podcast so that we can share what we've learned with newer publishers so that you can learn from our mistakes. Or maybe you just want to understand the publishing industry. This week, we are going to answer a reader question. Thanks, reader. Which is posed at Ellie, so you're welcome, reader, is... How did you become an editor? And there are also some follow-up questions. So, okay. So, I became an editor um, through nepotism. Mm. Well, let's dial it back a few steps. Um, Going deep. I am, I guess, what you would call a self-taught editor. Oh. self-made editor even like I became a book editor by editing books that I was going to publish but you became an editor much earlier than that you were an editor of your newspaper you were an no, that's editor a good point. by profession oh my God, you're in right. that you were trained as an editor I was never as, trained as, an as an anthropologist <laughs> hmm okay well which is done honestly the same thing I will say... Bum, 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 point Joe. False. I was never trained as an editor. I was trained to do as a critical thinker and as Which a reader. Which is the same thing. <laughs> Second point Joe. <laughs> so my very first editing experience that I can think of was when I um, published a zine when I was a teenager. Okay. And I would... I guess I was the editor of that zine. I didn't think of it this way. I'm mm. trying to remember if I ever had guessed writers or other people write for the zine and I can't remember but if I did I guess I would have been their editor mm -hmm. um the first time I ever did anything can't remember I can't remember it was so long ago your star-studded lineup it was 30 years ago right right <laughs> imagine how famous all those stars are now I was too ashamed to even look at the zines until about oh. two years ago and I only have one copy of one of them how many chicken soup recipes uh, that's the real metric for these things chicken soup recipe is interesting well I had a wide variety of media in the zine I had poems oh. and block prints and I will uh, not be reading political this. essays and I had that like obligatory letter from the editor, I guess. Which did was... you do a Bill Clinton is not that bad or no? It was Ross a... Perot, severely misunderstood guy. No, it was more like abortion is an important human right, and oh. I like traveling. And I'm sorry, it's taken me so long to put the next issue. Out. I was thinking that you would have like more <laughs> misguided politics, but okay. Point, Ellie. Yeah, I know. I I I think. I'm sure that much of what was in there was misguided. Okay, cool. But I don't think that I, my political views differed greatly then from what they are now. Right, right. It just seems like at that age you're kind of trying to make a splash. Well, anyway, I was the editor in chief and publisher of oh. um, what was it called, Briar Rose Zine. So how did All you get that issues. gig? I, you know, I like found a copy of the like the like Y2K Whole Earth catalog, the big white one at Barnes and Noble on the 30% off table. And I brought it home and there was a whole spread of, or a whole pa giant page about zines, which mm -hmm. was how I learned about zines. And I was immediately like, that's the thing for me. I am so into this. And I like wrote away for fact sheet five. And then I was like, oh, I need a zine to trade with other people mm. because I didn't have any money because I was a child. So I like made a zine and then I I got a P.O. box. It was it was good. It was a positive cultural influence of my youth. Did you get reviewed in Fact Sheet 5? No, I never did. Okay, right, right. Briar Rose just never, I guess, was discovered in the way that it could have been. It wasn't, like, my highest quality publication that, I don't know, yeah. It, like, had... It, yeah. It, it, it was not quite ready for prime time. Mm -hmm. So how did you hone these skills as an editor? So uh, when I was older, and I was like college age, but I wasn't in college, I was like living in an apartment, and one of my friends, Lauren, um, hi Lauren if you're watching this, who had, had gotten a book contract to write an anthropology book, and I was like, oh, can I 
like look at it and read it and give you editorial feedback and she was like sure and so I did and then her commentary and I like thought about it really hard and I like wrote a lot of comments in the margins of the printout that I had printed out which I did which I guess was how things worked back then mm -hmm. and then her feedback to me was that was actually really helpful <laughs> mm, okay so you did it by accident you became an editor <laughs> and I, I don't know how that bolstered my confidence I was like oh this is a skill that I have and then I went and um, had some ill-advised years of every time I met anyone who had written something I would take it upon myself to provide them editorial comments which oh I guess I did that too yeah which you know like is a great way to hone your skill and also a great way to learn boundaries when people bristle at that understandably I most of the most of the time people would either not respond or be thankful so mm. there you go well then in my case though and I wouldn't necessarily say I mean either the work that I was commenting on was so rudimentary that like the comments were obvious or um, you know like I was not a incisive. I mean, I was a incisive and like smart, critical thinker, but I was like, like Ellie, incredibly inexperienced and had no idea what I was talking about. So like, my observations were fairly obvious. And I actually did get some positive feedback. Like I had a job as an administrative assistant at the medical school, and part of that job was typing up uh, research papers for doctors that they would write in their like doctor handwriting, and I would type it, and then. Um, I would provide editorial feedback unasked for, and mm. one, one doctor that I worked for actually did appreciate it and take my feedback, which was another, you know, boost of confidence and pushing yeah. me onto that path, I guess. That's great. But then, yeah, my first, like, proper editorial job was um, when I became managing editor at Bike Portland, which is a blog about bicycling based in Portland, and um, I had started as a columnist, and when I... And then I, it became kind of one of my responsibilities to get other columns from other people and make them sort of ready to post, which I just did. I don't know. I didn't really even think of it as editing. I was just like, this won't work. How do I make it work? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I did any like, hey, person, what do you think of these edits? I think I would just like revise as needed and post it. So sorry to anyone there who... Um, maybe mm -hmm. got their toes stepped on and their meanings mistaken. There's a time and a place for that kind of editing. Quick and yeah. dirty. Yeah. And then um, I, when I was running my own publishing company, I was the editor. Mm -hmm. and How'd you get that job? How did I get that job? Nepotism. I did. I was related to myself, and I assigned myself to this Oh, the task. highest rank. Oh, I see how it works. <laughs> it's nice. true. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Um, and then, yeah, edit, being the editorial director became one of my duties at Microcosm mm. when we merged. So I guess I was prepared through various accidental and some intentional professional roles. Right. Was there a specific person or opportunity that helped you the most? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, really, all the people that like kind of took my somewhat boundary-violating volunteer edits and used them in were like affirming of them. I really appreciate that. Thank you. You could have brushed me off and probably should have, but um, yeah, so many people. I guess the thing that helped me the most, though, honestly, was um, working at Microcosm and working with you and working with our authors and our staff here, and that really like helped me, I guess, become a more author friendly editor because mm. before I had been the kind of editor and now and uh, honestly working with interns working with editorial interns helped me learn the most because I could see what they were doing that was like having a negative impact on the book on the author and then I could see oh that's something that I was doing too out of not knowing and I and being able to teach them not to do it helped me teach myself to do it better too so right. thanks interns that's a great point okay and then Second follow-up question, if you could go back, what pitfalls would you avoid? If I could... I hate hypothetical questions like this, because I can't go back. Mm -mm. And the pitfalls are the things that taught me the most. Right. Oh, excellent answer. Okay. What have you enjoyed the most as an editor? Ooh, what do I enjoy the most as an editor? I would answer the previous question by saying that I would not take on work that... I 
knew was a failure from the start. Like I would kill the project sooner and that would, cause it's like when you try to finesse something that can't really be finessed, it's like everybody leaves unhappy. I love that you feel that way now. Mm -hmm. um, though I have learned a lot from trying to save projects that you insisted we save and some of them we have saved. And some of them are, and a lot of those are worth saving. It's more just like, a lot of times somebody will try to bring you on as an editor for something where it's really not saying anything and uh, in addition to that there's really nobody that is looking for more of that kind of reading so it's like both rudimentary mm. and unsought and you kind of need at least one of those two things in a piece of writing for it to be worth saving. Mm. The thing I enjoy the most is when you're doing developmental edits on a book where it's not really fully formed yet and it's kind of chaotic and you have that like that moment when it all falls into place and you know how to you know how to make it work perfect thanks for joining us once again please send your questions to podcast at microcosmpublishing.com so we can answer them on future episodes and please give us five stars on itunes and everywhere else that podcasts are reviewed you can find us on the internet at microcosm.pub on Twitter at Microcosm. On Facebook at Microcosm Publishing. On Instagram at Microcosm underscore pub. And here in Portland, Oregon on North Williams Avenue. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>